is my pleasure and delight to join you there in Abu Dhabi for this first International DAISY Foundation Conference. And it is my pleasure to join you with have you meet Dr. Vanessa Wright, who is my wonderful Watson postdoc scholar from Oklahoma City University in the United States. And here we are to share this wonderful occasion where we're presenting the partnership between the Daisy Foundation and Watson Caring Science Institute for this joint research. And the overriding question is, is there evidence of the 10 Caritas processes of the Watson theory of human caring in the DAISY award narratives? Because we're really curious to explore whether the, um, there's evidence of the theory that are, these DAISY awardees are already practicing this theory, but they don't really know it. And now you have evidence of helping to empirically validate it if indeed we find evidence of the Caritas processes through this research. And this was also supported by uh, Dr. Cynthia Sweeney and Dr. Marion Turkel served as resources and consultants on this project. So this is a very special opportunity for me personally now to share my first part of the work, which precedes the research, which is the foundation for the theory itself and Caritas processes. So as we do this, I'm wanting us to understand together that we're bringing caring science and care toss together as a maturing of the discipline of nursing because it brings out these timeless eternal values that we bring to our profession. We hold this ethic of belonging that we all share, a unitary worldview. We embrace this philosophical orientation to our shared humanity. And really, nursing has a covenant with global humanity to sustain human caring, which is why this conference becomes such a visionary representation of the international caring that DAISY Foundation and Watson Caring Science hold dearly. So this uh, work now begins to help us to see a shared principles and shared language. The Caritas provides a language for the phenomena of human caring that, are other, that otherwise is invisible, largely unless you highlight it through awardees such as the DAISY Foundation. But uh, this helps us to converge knowledge and practices, theory and research, and also helps us to expand our research traditions by bringing new dimensions of our research together. So as we move forward, I will just highlight, you know, the whole meaning of Caritas and the foundation of the theory. And of course, Caritas comes from the Latin word meaning to cherish, to appreciate, to give special, if not loving, attention to. It connotes, connotes something that is very fine and indeed precious. And it helps me to understand and bring forward the caring and love nurses embrace and have worked to fulfill. Uh, their practices across time. So the theory of human caring and caring science really is a framework that helps you to see the big picture if you don't really know this background, is that the unitary field of caring science that we all hold comes to, we bring to our profession through this ethical, moral, and philosophical value-guided foundation that holds the higher orientation of the science model. But the language of the theory of human caring is really those universal 10 Caritas processes. They're now considered universals across time and space and different nationalities and belief systems and different geographic settings around the world. And so this is a way that unites nursing in a way that we can give voice and language where we're already practicing this, but we have not necessarily named it. And during this uh, really important postmodern time with everything being so topsy-turvy with the pandemic and so forth, it's so important that we have language to define our phenomena. And one of the reasons they say in the postmodern world, if you don't have your own language, you don't exist. So these, these partnerships between DAISY Foundation and Watson Caring Science help us to make visible what has been invisible. And so I will go through the 10 care cost processes very briefly, but I want you to understand they're lived out in the caring moment 
those caring moments are transpersonal. They transcend time, space, and physicality. They last with us across time. They last with patients across time. That's why the DAISY Foundation awardees becomes an important way of helping us to honor and see and cherish these caring moments. And this invites and expands the entire field of practice to bring the caring and love together in those caring moments that we highlight by having the, the DAISY Foundation awardees. But the caring moment is affected by the theory. It is informed by the theory and the consciousness of each individual and our heart-centered intentionality and, and ways of being present in these micro ways that inform what happens in that caring moment, we have to prepare ourselves. And the last part of the paradigm of the caring science theory is that we get to redefine all the things that we're doing are no longer just doing this, but how we are doing them. And we can now reframe those procedural and task and all of those things that we're already doing into uh, ways of being that Caritas is way of being. And also when we're doing these tasks, we're actually offering these tasks and these procedures as caring and healing modalities within the context of the theory, helping to potentiate wholeness and healing for the patient and being in, in right relation and human presence with them. So I'm going to pause. Let you take a deep breath. This is the background of the theory itself. And now I'm going to go through the 10 Caritas processes. But just to again make the connection between the DAISY Foundation Awards, they happen and they're highlighting narratives of caring moments. And these caring moments are where we can find evidence of the Caritas in the DAISY Award practices of the human caring theory. So that's sort of the big picture of what's happening here conceptually. So the first Caritas process is, is really embrace loving kindness by how we begin to fulfill these values, this altruism, these humanistic approaches that we bring to serve self and others is through this practice of loving kindness and compassion and equanimity with ourselves first. So the self-caring becomes very critical to being able to sustain our caring practices. And nurses will be finding this in their own evidence of their own practices in order to sustain human caring for another. The second care task process is really inspiring uh, how we inspire others by enabling faith and hope where we help them by becoming authentically present in that moment. So these caring moments in our authenticity, our heart-centered presence is helping to enable the faith and hope regardless of their beliefs and practices. We work from their frame of work, reference honoring them. The third care task process is trust, where we have to trust ourselves and our own intuition, the sensitivity to ourselves in our ongoing spiritual development, which is so important to sustaining ourselves and the authenticity of ourselves. The fourth care task process is nurturing, how we are developing authentic, trusting, caring relationships as core to all the practices. So when you're practicing caring, you are engaged in authentic, trusting, caring relationships. The fifth care task process is forgiving or forgive, how we allow positive and negative feelings, the shadow and light side of our humanity. And we do this through listening authentically to another person's story. We work from their frame of reference and we get to hear what they have to say in terms of their life experiences and what is welling up for them in these moments of care. The sixth one has to do with deepening our understanding where we go beyond just problem solving to finding creative solutions and strengths of other people, no matter how many difficulties a person may have or such illness, everybody has strengths. So this is a strength-based approach and creativity looking for new solutions to the process of caring in, in service to another. The seventh one is balancing our teaching so that we're not just giving information 
We're not just giving facts and content, but it's a relational teaching moment where you're working in relationship with this intersubjective meaning and understanding that information is not knowledge and knowledge is not necessarily understanding. And understanding still requires it, taking, it being taken in by the person so that they can absorb this and make it their own meaning so that they can change their practices for health and healing and wholeness for self. The eighth one is related to co-creating these this creative healing environments for patients and self so that the nurse's presence in self, herself or himself is actually the healing environment. We are the healing environment. We're not just creating the healing environment physically, but we are energetic presence and love and caring consciousness. The caritas practices helps to create and so co-create a healing environment with another human being and the family. The ninth care type process is really about ministering. It's like ministering by a, a assistance with basic needs, those most basic acts that we really are needed to, to be of sacred service to another person when they're most needy. And these become sacred acts. So we're not just touching the body physical with the physical needs, but we're touching the whole spirit, the heart, and the soul of another human being. So we're in reverential service to another person by helping them with their basic needs. And the 10th care task process is, I don't know, we don't have all the answers and we have to be open to these existential, these spiritual unknowns. This work allows for mysteries and miracles because we cannot have all the answers and we now witness these incredible miraculous cures and people die when we expect them to live and we, they live when we expect them to die. And so all of these are open to us holding reverence for this mystery in the sacred circle of life and death. So when we do this work of caring science and caritas, we get to include caring and love in our science. And we discover that caring and healing professions and disciplines are much more than a detached scientific endeavor, but a life-giving and life-receiving endeavor for humanity. So this project, the Daisy Foundation and Watson Care and Science Partnership, help us to uncover the care toss and this sacred science of nursing in the Daisy nurses' extraordinary caring moments. And we bring the light of our humanity back in, out of the shadows of this institutional darkness. And as we do that now, we are presented with the most presenting question now is, is there evidence of the 10 Caritas processes that I've just been through of the theory of human caring in the Daisy narr Award narratives? So now I turn it over to my beautiful postdoc scholar, Dr. Vanessa Wright, to present the research of her findings from this joint project. Greetings, I'm Dr. Vanessa Wright, and I serve as Chair of Graduate Education and Associate Professor at Oklahoma City University, and I'm a Watson Caring Science Institute postdoctoral scholar. I'm very excited to present our joint research project between the Daisy Foundation and the Watson Caring Science Institute. Watson's theory of human caring can base caring as a synergistic concept influenced by transpersonal relationships and honoring of the unity of mind, body, spirit, self, and other. The theory emphasizes that human-to-human -human connectedness and caring relations influence the outcomes of health and healing. Watson's evolved theory and the 10 Caritas processes serve as a guide for professional practice and provide nurses with a shared language. There are many hospitals throughout the world who are now facing their professional practice model on Watson's caring science theory. The DAISY Award is a form of meaningful recognition in which patients, families, or other healthcare providers nominate a nurse as a means to express gratitude for extraordinary compassionate care. The stories submitted in support of the nurse often describe characteristics or interactions that are deeply valued by the individual who submitted the nomination. So to provide you with the brief, brief background of the study, we wanted to analyze these stories and see if we could identify what interactions or in the moment to moment connection or transcendence do others value or perceive as exceptional. 
or more simply stated, what makes an exceptional nurse exceptional? And is there evidence of the human caring theory within these identified interactions? With the recent state of nurses heavily influenced by the pandemic, we felt the last year that this was the perfect time to explore this topic. The purpose of the study is that this is a retrospective directed content analysis, and it was to explore the DAISY narratives for evidence of Watson's theory of human caring in nursing practice. The central research question for the study is, is there evidence of the Caritas processes of the theory of human caring in the DAISY Award narratives? The DAISY Award nomination stories selected were from eight different healthcare facilities, and they were affiliated with both Watson Caring Science Institute and the DAISY Foundation. A random number generator was used to select a minimum of two stories from each institution. The remaining stories were then aggregated for data analysis. It was determined that data saturation occurred at 33 stories. As this was a retrospective study, all of the stories that were analyzed were submitted between January 2018 and January 2020, and they were obtained from the DAISY Foundation platform. The initial coding categories and operational definitions were developed from the 10 Caritas processes within Watson's theory of human caring. After reading through the narratives to get a general sense of the whole story or the essence of the experience, the primary researcher identified and categorized all instances and evidence of the Caritas processes. To enhance confirmability, the actual statements from the stories that supported the particular codes were included. The co-researchers confirmed the selection of the quotes in the categories to enhance rigor of the analysis and credibility of the results. In any case of disagreement, the researchers returned to the original narrative data for clarity on the intended meaning. The qualitative research program in vivo was used to assist the researchers in organizing, managing, and coding of the data. The results of the study strongly and clearly supported that these nurses were practicing Watson's human caring theory by evidence of the Caritas processes being present in their interactions. Every single nomination story had at least one of the 10 Caritas processes present, and many of them demonstrated evidence of multiple Caritas processes. Instead of assigning each narrative a Caritas process, each sentence was looked at as a meaning unit to hold these narratives in their full integrity. The primary and secondary redundancy continues to affirm the synergy of this work. There was an unexpected finding noted at the conclusion of the data analysis. An 11th theme emerged as patient advocacy as informed moral action. This theme reflects Watson's description of unitary caring science practice as informed moral action, and we'll discuss it a little bit later with our findings. So to share with you our results or our findings, as stated, we have the 10 Caritas processes that served as coding, and then we are providing some narratives from the stories that support the presence of each of the Caritas processes. So Caritas process one, embrace or loving kindness, um, can usually be described as sustaining humanistic, altruistic values through the practice of loving kindness, compassion, and equanimity with self and others. One of the um, stories that were submitted stated, she always said hello to my parents when they came to visit and would update them on my son's day. That may seem small, but it meant so much to my family to have someone so friendly and loving take care of him. Another person wrote, she is kind, very knowledgeable, and so attentive to her patients and all of our family. She truly eased the deep loss of my dear twin, and I shall never forget the loving care she gave. Caritas process number two is inspire or faith and hope, and it can be described as supports others' sense of hope and helping others believe in themselves. There was clear evidence of this process in some of the stories. Um, one example is her first smile, our first conversation when she did all the talking, was the beginning of me believing mentally I was going to survive this ordeal. Another participant stated, she made me feel safe and seen and heard during a time when I felt like I had no control over my life. Caritas process three, trust or transpersonal can be described as being responsive to patients needs and feelings, building a helping, trusting and caring relationship. Evidence of this process 
She asked about my life, prayed with us for our son as he was in the NICU for a week. The second example is I've let the ball drop. Still blank is there, supporting me, helping me, and always coming up with solutions. Caritas process four is nurture or relationship. In this Caritas process, the nurse holds a sacred space for others in their time of need. In an example, someone wrote, Blank never complains about any assignment. He instead always tries to figure out if any nurse is falling behind on their assignment and offers his help voluntarily. A second example is Blank patiently sat on the floor and explained for 20 to 30 minutes in a gentle way about the inevitable death of her youngest daughter. She was also incredibly gracious and so careful with me and my family members. Caritas process five is forgive or all. And this allows for expression of feelings. The nurse accepts and helps others deal with their negative feelings. A clear example of that was she listened patiently as I anxiously asked silly questions and took the time to talk me off the ledge many times. The second example is Blank goes so far above and beyond the medical experience needed to even become a nurse. Her empathy, kindness, compassion, especially when I was simply just mad at the world and was not easily, not an easy person to be around. Caritas process six or deepen our creative self um, can be described as creative problem solving and the use of self to create a healing environment for all. So one person wrote, Blank was very patient and made the atmosphere bright and made this difficult time for our family just a bit easier. She danced with my grandma and got her moving and made her laugh and assisted her on her road to recovery. The second example is her friendliness was very much appreciated as were all of her small touches. When laying in a hospital bed hour after hour, even the smallest human contact, even when it's through a bl blue glove, is very much appreciated. Caritas Process 7, Balance or Learning, can be described as transpersonal teaching and learning experiences and staying within the other's frame of reference. An example of this is uh, she was always willing to explain, re-explain, and reassure. She was the peace of mind that pulled me through the hardest times. What I was given by blank and all the nurses on 7D were tools I needed to survive this journey. Another wrote, she always took the time to answer all of my questions or find the answers to my questions, and she helped me understand which medication I was taking and why. Caritas process eight or co-create or Caritas filled is about creating a healing environment at all levels. So one, one person wrote, she knew what I and my family needed just by being with us. She went above and beyond to help me medically, but also emotionally. Another wrote, despite being busy and in high demand, Blank always checked in on me and my family members emotionally, while also providing medicine, water, extra blankets, etc. Caritas Process 9 is Minister or Humanity. In this Caritas Process, um, the nurse is reverently assisting with basic needs as sacred acts, touching the mind, body, spirit of other, and sustaining human dignity. So our two examples. One wrote, I can only imagine how difficult delivering and caring for a stillborn has to be, but she did it with such tender, loving care. Blank helped me make the most horrible day in all of our lives a little bit more bearable. Our second example is she called to check on him. She came to see him when he went to hospice. She came to our home to say her goodbyes, to pray for him and my family the day he died in my home. And then finally, Caritas Process 10 is open or infinity. It's described as being open to spiritual mystery unknowns and allowing for miracles. So one wrote, she was so moved by our story that she immediately reached out to her manager to see if there was a way to get our dog in to visit our daughter. Pretty quickly, we were granted permission to bring our dog to the PICU to see her. It was a heartwarming moment and it turned out to be our daughter's last day of life. Somebody else wrote, I will always remember the comfort she showed me and how she held me when my sister passed 
She is an angel of mercy. So what we did not expect to find was the emergence of an 11th theme. The 11th theme that emerged was praxis, or patient advocacy as informed moral action. There were many stories in which you would see this manifestation of patient advocacy and the nurse just going beyond um, what's typically expected within the discipline to make sure that the patient was receiving the best care possible. So some examples of this is being a nurse myself, I felt weird about this plan, but felt a bit trapped and thought this is just what we had to do for our baby. Luckily for us, Blake came in and met us that morning and immediately started discussing the plan of care with myself and my husband. I shared my concerns and Blank agreed, and immediately she went into action to advocate for us and our daughter. Somebody else wrote, she helped us to advocate for the providers to find a solution for our son by helping us reinforce that this was a reoccurring issue rather than just a one-time thing. This eventually led us to his Hirschsprung's diagnosis. And finally, it takes a lot of guts to follow your instincts and go against a physician's decision. So the emergence of this 11th theme, patient advocacy as informed moral action, really identifies or highlights convergence um, and nurses practicing or living out theory, even though they might not have articulated that or known that, they're still practicing the theory. So this theme reflects Watson's most recent description of unitary caring science praxis as informed moral practice, making explicit the underlying values ethics, morals, and basic goodness of the discipline. Advocacy as exemplar of mature caring science practices or a moral idea manifest on behalf of the patient. The results of this study really just highlights that this is one more step towards illuminating that nurses are already doing this work. We're just providing the language to frame it. And I wanna close with this quote from Jean. It is affirming elevating and making visible for DAISY awardees and hospitals alike to realize their DAISY nurses are actually practicing Watson's theory, guided caritas, even if they're not aware. It's been an honor to share this work with you and thank you for having me. So I hope this has been helpful to have an overview of the theory of human caring and the 10 caritas processes as a backdrop for this beautiful project between Watson Caring Science Institute and the DAISY Foundation and the celebration of the caring practices of the awardees of the Daisy Award. God bless. Namaste.